Hello everyone, welcome to my Model Railway YouTube blog. My previous blogs have been on the Engage, doing the CMOI, um, that some people might have already watched. Um, the Engage has been dismantled um, due to a house mood we, we, we didn't go ahead with. And so I'm going to start ahead again, but this time I'm going to be doing it in double O. I got a bit annoyed with the Engage, getting these DCC chips into the Engage models, and I wanted to stay alive as well, it was almost becoming impossible. So I've decided to go to double O. So I've got a Raspberry Pi that I'm going to be running the JMRI on this time. And I've used these quite a bit for different projects. I've run a um, essential heating system, um, certain Apache servers, watering systems in the garden, water solar systems. So they're brilliant bits of kit. Um, running on Python programming mainly and doing web design. But this time I'll be doing a JMRI and maybe be able to do some interfacing with that. See how it goes. And I'm going to be doing the Arduino and I'm going to be doing DCC++ this time connecting to the Raspberry Pi by the uh, USB port and building on that. I will be adding CMRI in as, if I can to do all the accessory decoders side of it so changing the points and signalling and the occupied sensors hopefully the CMRI will do that and this these DC++ will be running the trains. So this is what I've got at the moment I've got one DCC chip and I've got one loco which I've just bought and I'll show you how I'm going to fit the DCC chip into that so that that be up DCC ready and that's all I've got at the moment apart from some couple of lengths of double O track um, so the, the idea would be to run the trains from in here which were my den and I'll be going outside into the garden and around the garden and then back to here and through, through my workshop and across the pond and stuff so I'll be showing you that later on as well through the video I'll show you the route out this is where I've got my barbecue so we'll be drilling a hole down the bottom and hopefully going through down the bottom of the garden and my workshop's down the bottom where I'll be going into the workshop building a bit of a railway down there coming out of the back of the workshop down the bottom there it's going to be a green ass it's going to be down around the back of that funneling around this side of the garden across my pond which is down the bottom and then back through and into the den so that's going to be the route, it might take a bit of time to set up, especially with the cost of everything. And so I'll start with setting up the JMRI on the Raspberry Pi and show you how I do that. Right, so to get started then, the first thing you need to do is set up the Raspberry Pi. And to do that, we need a micro SD card and a SD reader. If you can't get, if you need a bigger slot, let's put it in your computer. And we need to be. I need to format this SD card for it to work. To format it, I'm going to be using this SD formatter because these cards have been used before. So I need to make sure that they're completely empty of anything on it, and they've got their full capacity. Because when you start putting an operating system on these, you'd lose the capacity of the SD cards if you ever want to. Delete them all and start again. This is the best program I found to SD format to use. Um, so I'll refresh this and it's picked up. They've got F drive, and as you can see, it's showing there it's 1.57 gigabytes of space in it, where these are actually 16 gigabyte SD cards. So if we go to options, select that down to on, and we'll format it. And that's the format finished, and you can see it's gone to 14.8 gigabytes now. So this is quite a good program to get yourself back to basics on your SD cards. Alright, so now we need to go to the Raspberry Pi website and I'm downloading nudes for the operating system. So if you go to downloads at the top, click on nudes, and then click on download zip. Now I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to do this again. I'm just showing you how I did it. So I'll cancel that download. And now the download would have been completed, it goes in my download folder. And there's your nudes folder, zip. So double click on that. Go back one. And wow, seems to be playing up lately. Now I need to copy all this and put it onto the SD card. So select it all. The SD card's down here on the, um, the F drive. And just drag it all over and drop it onto there. And that's it. It'll take quite a few minutes now. So I'll pause the video and restart it again when this is done. But that's a simple way of getting the operating system for Raspberry Pi over to your SD card 
without any using any further third party software programs. As you can see, the download to the SD card is now complete and go over to the, my F drive here and you can see all the folders for running the Raspberry Pi operating system are now uploaded. So I'll take this SD card out now, put it into the Raspberry Pi and we'll get the Raspberry Pi up and running. Alright, so with my Raspberry Pi, which I've already got it connected up over here, I've got a power supply down here on the left hand side. I've got a HDMI cable connected up to my TV and I've got a, an Ethernet cable and I will be connecting up my USB mouse and the USB keyboard for just for the initial startup of the Raspberry Pi until I can get connected to it via the SSH. I need the SD card which I'll just take that out of the computer so that it's a bit awkward. So my little SD card um, will slot into the bottom back side of the Raspberry Pi that goes in the, the bottom down here. I'll show you that. And that just slots in like that. And now all I've got to do is power it up, put the TV onto the Raspberry Pi settings and watch it put, start up. Alright, so I'm just about to do it for the first time. It might be a bit awkward recording this because I'm doing it via video camera on the TV screen. So the first thing I do is turn my TV over to the HDMI setting. And I'm just flicking my switch on to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see it starts to power up, the green light starts to flash. And on the screen we get the Raspberry Pi initial startup um, coloured screen. I won't show the video of the full setup because it takes quite a bit of time. I'll just show you the initial part of setting this up. So we now get to the option page. And then hopefully you can see that. But the first option right at the top, it says the Raspberry Pi full recommended. That's the one we're gonna I'm gonna go for. So we just click on the little square for that and then click on the install button. Gives you a warning about installing it. It would override existing data, but we're not too worried because we've formatted all that. So I click yes, and then that's it. It would now go through the full setup. Um, so when this is fully set up, I'll continue on with the video. All right, so if all yours has gone well, you should be at this stage now where it says that operating system has been successfully installed. Um, just get the white mouse, so we click OK. Now start now the um, operating system now starts up. Get to the desktop. There you go. It says welcome to the Raspberry Pi. Um, down here you got your IP address. Now you might want to make note of this because you want to get into the system later on without using the, the desktop and the keyboards and everything. So if you make a note of that, but you could get this from your router if you don't make a note of it, or I'll show you later on where you can get hold of it. So that's your IP address down here. I don't know if you've seen that. On the video camera, leave all these to whatever setting you want. It. Got to put a password in, which you need to make a note of. You need this later one to connect to it. If you want to use the VNC, oh, there. If you want to use VNC or, or, or remote connection, then you're going to need the password. Set up. It's going to search for my network, which I'm going to have to connect to. So you can see it's searching for networks. I've got the password in for that. Right, it didn't ask you to do an update on the software. Now I'm going to skip this because I'll do this later because it takes quite a long time. Um, so we'll skip this for now. And that's it. Done, and as you can see, we now have a Raspberry Pi operating system up and running. So, one of the things you need to do is go over to the top left hand corner, so get the menu up, go to accessories, sorry, not accessories, help or well, preferences. I've got to get it right in a minute. <laughs> go to preferences, and then go to hand to the Pi configuration, that's what I'm looking for. And in the Pi configuration, this is where you could change your password and stuff if you want. I'm going to change the host name because I might set up something later on to um, 
I'm going to call it Benson Valley. This is purely because I might be calling it later, later on, but I might change that. But the main thing here is the interfaces, which is the second tab along. You don't, I'm not worried about the camera, but the next one down is the SSH, so you click that to enable that. Your VNC, click that to enable that. And I, I enable the SPI and the I2C, um, and the serial ports, and the one wire, and the GPOs. So I enable everything because there's, at any point I might decide to use these. Which I have done in the past, but not um, not through the JMR. I see it, it depends on what I can do. I don't know. So enable them lock. Click OK. And it should ask you to reboot it. There we go. So click Yes to reboot it, and then that'll reboot up. All right. So that's up running. What I'm going to do now is switch the TV back over to my main computer, and we'll go ahead and we'll start setting up the putty to get this up and running. And remote connect to the Raspberry Pi. We'll be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi using a program called Putty. And if you haven't already got this, just type in Putty on Google, and there you go. Download Putty for the system there. Once you've downloaded it, open the Putty up the program. First thing you do is it asks you for your host name, IP address. So we put the IP address in for the one I just got in the Raspberry Pi. Point one point three one, and then click load. Oh no, sorry, click open. First thing you do, you click yes to that, is type in your, your username, which would be pi, and your password that you set up earlier. There we go, that's how we get connected to a Raspberry Pi remotely now, um, using a terminal monitor, which you might not use, but it's safe, but it's, um, some people like to use, or, or need to know, or to install things remotely. So the other program you're going to want to run or set up is the real VNC, so we can connect to our Raspberry Pi using. Um, so we'll have the remote connection, and we'll have the desktop to show you. So this is the real VNC. I'll put the link in hopefully later on um, to show you how to get to it. So there's a few out there that you don't need, but this is the one. So you click the download, and then just follow the instructions to install it. Um, I've already installed it, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that on this one. And then you bring up your real BNC which you've got down here. Type in the IP address again, 192.168.1.31. And then you click yes to that. Click the continue on this button. Now your username's going to be pi again and type in the password that you had earlier. And there we go, we're now into it. So this is the desktop here of the Raspberry Pi. So it's exactly the same as what you're looking at earlier when we connected by the HDMI. But I'm now connected to the Raspberry Pi via my computer. So on my Raspberry Pi, I can now disconnect my mouse, my keyboard, and my HDMI. And, and if you set it up on a Wi-Fi wi system, um, so it's wireless, the only thing you'll have connected to your Raspberry Pi is your power supply. And then from here, we'll go ahead now and start to install the JMRI. Right, so to install the JMRI, I'll just maximise this so it takes up the whole screen. So we've called JMI, we go to the um, web browser for the Raspberry Pi's web browser. And so we type in JMRI. JMI downloads. And then we're going down on the page to the downloads bits at the bottom. And we're going to click on the one for the Linux. Just take this to the GitHub for the Linux download. Right, so the download is now complete. So I've closed down the browser in the background, saving a bit of memory. memory. And there's our JMRI. So double click on that to unzip it. And I'm going to drag this from here over to the Documents tab. Hopefully. Right, so that's finished. It's gone green now. I'll close this down. Right, so double click the JMRI. And then we go down to the uh, Panel Pro. Double click on it. So double click and then execute. Don't execute until just click the execute and right over to the left hand side.
and it goes starting up. And there we have it. That's the JMRI installed now. Obviously, we've got to go for all the setup. Still got to do the DCC plus plus, so we can get it all connected and everything up and running. But that's the first initial part of this video. So we now have the Raspberry Pi up and running. We're connected via the VNC remotely, so I'm not actually connected or got any TV connections to the Raspberry Pi now. And um, we can connect through the SSH through PuTTY if we need to, and we have JMRR up fully up and running. Thanks for watching. Next step will be setting up the DCC++.